almost got it. Hi, I'm Jessie. I'm an educator at the Pro Museum. And welcome to another edition of A Major Brain at Home. Well, I'm not actually at home, but my favorite wetland. And I'm looking for frogs. Frogs are my absolute favorite animal. It's my favorite time of year, spring. That's when they're most active. You wanna help me find some? I can't think of a better way to celebrate Earth Day week than learning about frogs. You can find frogs on every continent in the world except Antarctica. Today we'll be learning how to ID local frogs by sight and sound, as well as how do they survive in ecosystems around DFW. A frog is an amphibian. There are over 8,000 members of the class Amphibia, which are classified in three orders, frogs, salamanders, and Sicilians. Let's take a hike at a local wetland and see what species of frogs we can ID and learn more about. I prefer to start around dusk when frogs start to become active. Here are some good frog end supplies, a net, some kind of flashlight, and a field guide for species identification. You can download your own field guide on our Amaze Your Brain at Home webpage. It might not hurt to have your lucky frog socks too. Also, be aware of the other living things sharing the ecosystem, like snakes and poison ivy. Leaves of three, leave it be. Look, our first frog. What do you think it is? This is probably the most common species of frog we find in the Metroplex. You guessed it a Blanchard's cricket frog. Let's check out their call and some color variations. Quick fact, males call to attract females. The white's tree frog that lives at the museum will demonstrate. With closed nostrils, air is moved from the lungs over the vocal cords into the air sac, that big bulge under his chin, which helps magnify the sound. See how competitive they are? I don't think he realized it's a recording of himself. Let's get back to it. I think I see one. What do you think it is? You're right, this is a green tree frog. These frogs are good climbers because of those large and sticky toe pads. Let's hear their call. Wow, ever heard that call before? There's one resting in a puddle. Frogs don't drink water like we do. They have semi-permeable skin, which means they can drink and breathe through their skin. It's a plains leopard frog. Let's hear their call. Let's see if we can get this guy to jump. Whoa, how far do you think this four inch frog can jump? Hmm, I bet I can beat it. Not too shabby. Okay, Sheldon, it's your turn. Sheldon's my pet box turtle. Uh, Sheldon, let's see how we did. Not great, Sheldon. Hmm, I did all right. Couldn't beat the leopard frog. Wow, bullfrog, seven feet, that's amazing. Try it at home, how far can you jump? Quick fact, frogs have a very unique skeleton modified for jumping. Much of the frog's forward jumping power comes from the hip joint. Their long leg bones can give them lift. Being able to jump well allows frogs to escape from predators and catch insects. This frog's right on the trail. What do you think? Looks like a bullfrog to me. Let's hear what it sounds like. Like most frogs, bullfrogs enjoy a diet of insects, but many also consume other frogs, mice, and even birds. Quick fact. Did you know that frogs use their eyeballs to help them swallow? Let's let Winston, the Woodhouse Toad, another Pro Museum resident, demonstrate. After Winston spots and grabs a cricket, he immediately closes his eyes. This helps push the cricket down his throat. Crazy. Wow, I've had a great time exploring this wetland with you. It gets me thinking about a frog's important role in the ecosystem. Frogs have an important place in the food chain as both predators and prey. Scientists have proven that it isn't easy being a frog. About a third of all amphibians on the planet are threatened with extinction. We learned today that frogs breathe and drink through their skin and are sensitive to changes in their environment like habitat loss and pollution. We can always do our part by learning more about local ecosystems, teaching others what we learn, and of course, cleaning up after ourselves. Aw oh man, too rainy to go out and look for frogs? I know, okay. Gather random items from your junk drawer, recycling, maybe even a few craft supplies. Use these to design an instrument that sounds like a frog call, maybe one that we learned about today. Here's my design. I think it kind of sounds like a cricket frog. What do you think? Some of the other educators from the Pro Museum joined in the fun. Check out our first jam session. I think I'll call our band Jesse and the Riveters. <laughs> I guess no Grammys in our future, but the instruments were fun to make. I challenge you to make your own frog call using items around your house. Please share your creation on social by tagging us at hashtag Pro Museum and hashtag Amaze Your Brain at Home. 
I hope you enjoyed this session of Amaze Your Brain at home. See you next time. Hear that? Vincent.